What is going on everybody? I'm Dr. Professor Luigi, and today I'm finally coming at you with part 3 of my immersive railroading tutorial, How to Actually Drive Trains. So, in the first episode, we looked over how to work all this fun track stuff, because after all, you need track to drive a train on it. And then, we looked at how to make the trains using all the fun machines that immersive railroading provides. They're very big. And finally, now that you have a track to drive your train, and a train to drive on the track, it's time to know how to drive the train. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, there isn't too much to it, after all it is railroads, one dimensional movement. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it, starting with the diesel locomotive. Now the diesel locomotive is definitely the best place to start with immersive railroading. Um, it's the simplest, It you really can't go wrong with a diesel locomotive. Uh, oftentimes there are, there are smaller diesel locomotives that are offered. Um, I know I have a few small ones in my packs and they're just, you know, it's they're less finicky. So diesel, um, again, I am always assuming that you're using immersive rail, immersive engineering uh, when you're using immersive railroading because you really you should. I mean, there's they, they require a lot of steel and a lot of stuff. So we're going to assume that uh, we're using immersive engineering. Uh, so, um, uh, diesel locomotives, as you may guess, take diesel fuel. And so that is the biodiesel that is created through immersive engineering that anyone who uses immersive engineering is very, very familiar with. So, once you have your steady supply of diesel fuel and a nice little tank of it, uh, you can load it up into a train. Now, there are a few ways to load fuel into a train. Uh, you can use a track loader, which I'm going to talk all about loaders and unloaders in a later video. Or you can just get yourself a bucket of biodiesel, so that's this bad boy right here, and then you can shift right click a train to open up its inventory. Now of course since this is connected to the tank it's topped off, but if you ever need to just manually fill a train, you just put a filled bucket right there and it will spit out an empty bucket. Uh, to board the train just right click and then if you need to open up the inventory while you're in the train, right click again. And of course, one thing that makes immersive railroading so great is you can actually walk around inside the train interiors. Uh, so we're going to talk a little more about that when we get into uh, connecting ra uh, trains and you know multiple trains and that kind of thing. So at the bottom left of the screen, you will see a little heads-up display. Uh, on the far left, that is how much fuel is in the train. And so as you can see, this train holds up to 36 buckets of fuel. And then that green bar is the engine temperature. So diesel locomotives, when you start them up, require some time to warm up before they're actually start. Uh, so the control for turning on and off uh, engines is the add uh, key. And so all the controls are going to be listed in the, uh, I'll put up a picture here, they're all going to be in the control menu, and it's pretty much all uh, stuck to the number pad. Some versions, the horn button is H, but in later versions, uh, they moved it to numpad enter. So I'm going to assume that you're using this this uh, keypad layout, because uh, that makes everything really nice on the number pad. So to start the engine, or to stop it, you press plus. And so right now, the engine's idling, it's all warmed up, and then if I wanted to shut it down, you can see uh, over here, the temperature begins to decrease. So we're going to go ahead and turn it back on and let it warm up. Uh, so yeah, you just got to start it up, warm it up, and then once it is up to about 76-ish degrees, uh, the train will begin. You, The train will be ready to drive. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just get started. So you can always go into third person. And uh, over on the side, you have the brake. That is controlled by 7 and 1 on the number pad. And then the throttle is controlled with 8 and 2. Now if you hit uh, 4... That'll s turn the brake off, so as you see I have it on, hit 4, it turns it off, and then if I hit the throttle back and forth, and then I press 5, it stops. And so that's sort of like the two little bars you have on the number pad there. The middle one brings it to 0, and then forwards and backwards. So, uh, we, uh, if we just go forward, you see we instantly move forward. Trains, of course, have a top speed, and they require fuel to move and all that. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just go, you see the exhaust darkens based on the fuel you're using. Alright, and then one very uh, neat feature with trains is the dead man switch. So you can activate that by pressing multiply in the numpad. As you see, dead man switch is enabled. 
So we are cruising in a nice little clip, and then I dis disembark, and you see the train stops. So when Dead Man Switch is enabled, if you leave the train, it'll engage full brake and zero the throttle. So of course we can also go back. So it's very important, especially if uh, you know you play on a server, maybe the server restarts, or you just get killed by a zombie or something, or a player. You don't want your train to just go hurling down a track that's a thousand miles long and it's going to take you all day to track it down. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and back up and then work with the steam train. So that's everything with the diesel locomotive. Fairly straightforward. You know, fill them up with diesel fuel. Uh, if you link multiple of them, they can share the controls. So if you have three trains linked like this, uh, you can control all of them from a single train. So super useful. Uh, that is not true for steam trains. So. so, next up is the steam locomotive, and they're both simpler and more complex all at the same time. So, if you load up into a steam train, you'll notice that the layout on the little menu there is a lot different. And so the far right bar is going to be your water. It's very important to keep an eye on your water level. The middle bar is the pressure that is that your steam locomotive has, and then the right bar is the temperature. And so notice there is no bar for fuel. Uh, the way steam trains work is you boil water to generate pressure, and then that pressure is what drives the train. Uh, so you're not necessarily driving on steam. You know you have to you have to do more than just create steam. You have to create pressure, which is gen which is generated by uh, steam. So uh, if you right click, you'll open up the inventory, and again you can also shift right click. But you'll notice this has a much different layout. You have the similar tank to the diesel locomotive, and that is filled with water. And then you have a, a firebox down here, and this is where you put your flammable fuel. So there is what uh, the step one whenever you're dealing with a steam train is fill it up with water. Uh, and so I am using a automatic filling system similar to what we saw with the diesel engine using fluid loaders but you can also load it up manually bucket by bucket uh, what's nice about using immersive engineering is you can have an infinite water supply with a pump so uh, that makes that part of you know filling up a train super easy now steam locomotives can burn any flammable fuel and so we can even get sticks we have sticks to go ahead and start with here and then if you put a stick in, you see it'll catch on fire. Now that red bar in the back that's dropping very quickly, you'll see uh, that demonstrates how long that piece of fuel lasts. Now I was unable to find if different fuels burn at different temperatures or if it's just a time-based situation. So um, I haven't been able to determine any difference. Obviously, you don't want to use sticks because they're going to take for, eh, they're going to burn out really quickly. Uh, so I always go with the good old tried and true coal, and then of course you could also use coal coke if you so desired. So, like I said, steam engines drive ba based on generating pressure, and you generate that pressure by boiling water and creating steam. Uh, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, so this temperature bar you see you want to get it to, it'll get to 100 degrees Celsius before you start creating steam. And then once you start creating steam, then you'll start creating pressure. Now this is a lot of water, which means it's going to take a lot of heat to get boiling. And so to do that, we're just going to go ahead and fill everything up with coal. Once you take a piece of coal out, that fire will keep burning, because you have to imagine you put that little piece of coal in there, it's still on fire. You can't take out the burning coal. Um, and so this fire won't turn off until it burns out. So let's say you decide you want to shut down your steam engine and you take out all of your coal. Well, there's still a fire burning in your firebox because, you know, you didn't you didn't take everything out. You didn't take you can't take out the stuff that's already burning. All right, so as you can see, we are generating some t uh, we're you know, building up a temperature and that's going to be slow. And that temperature rise is based on how much water is in your boiler. And so if you have a larger steam train that holds more water, you're going to need to burn more coal to heat it up. So for example, you know, one piece of coal will heat up one gallon of water in X amount of time, but it'll heat up 10 gallons of water in one tenth of the time. So the more water you have, the longer it takes to heat up, the more fire you need. Now once you actually start, once the water's boiling, 
it's already pretty much as hot as it needs to be. As you see, this temperature gauge tops out at 150. So once you get up, once everything's warmed up, you don't need as much fire. And so you can actually get away with taking out some coal and having a smaller fire. However, when it, as your train is moving, you're using the steam. And so when you're, you know, you have that pressure that's moving the train, but every cycle you lose some steam, which means you need to replace it. And so the faster your train goes, the more steam it's going to use, which means the more water you need to boil, the more coal you need in your firebox. So if you're going full speed thundering down a railroad line, you might need a full firebox. But if you're only, you know, going slowly in the rail yard, or maybe you just have your engine on standby, well, you could probably get away with having less coal. So rather than waiting for this steam train to warm up, we've already got this one warmed up here. As you see, it's at full pressure. The water is boiling at 100 degrees, and the tank is full. A little thermodynamics slash chemistry, liquid water cannot get above 100 degrees Celsius because as soon as it gets above 100 degrees, it's a gas, it's steam. So all of that energy that turns it into steam prevents the water from getting hotter. And, you know, if you pressurize it and stuff, that's a little different. So in normal operating conditions, your boiler will not get above 100 degrees Celsius. Now, there is one major danger about running steam trains. There's a reason this train is all by itself and there's a crater over there. Because you don't have very much water, it will heat up really quickly and it will steam will really shoot up. The last time this worked in one shot, so let's go ahead and try to blow up this steam train. Basically it'll blow up if it runs out of water too quickly. There we go. So yeah, if you run out of water and then you it basically builds up pressure too quickly and it causes a steam explosion. And in real life this has destroyed a lot of uh, valuable infrastructure and bodies. You do not want that to happen and the easiest way to make sure it doesn't happen is to not run out of water. Don't leave your engines unattended with the fire going unless you have an infinite water supply. Alright, so that being said, we are ready to rock. So. The controls for controlling a steam train are exactly the same. You have your dead man switch, you have your brake, you have your throttle. As you go, you have a fantastic chug chug sound, and you can see the steam exiting the pistons on either side, and you have the coal fumes going out. So very, very straightforward. All right, there is no engine to turn on and off. Uh, it just goes and that's that's the fire alright so now we're gonna go ahead and go back and discuss how to actually make a train alright so the coal tender is a very useful little piece of equipment and that leads us right into actually building trains so if you place down your coal tender you see ah it's very nice but it is not connected to the train. There are so many different ways you can connect uh, rolling stock together. The one I like to go for is you get kind of close. You're like, okay, this is about how long the coal tender is. And then you place it there. You hear that clanking sound. Boom, it's connected. Easy as, easy as pie. And if you right click on a rolling stock, I'm getting a little tangled up in here. What is going on? All right. So if you right click the coal tender, you'll notice you can actually walk around inside of it. And then if a train is connected, you can actually walk from car to car pretty easily. And so if I go ahead and remove the coal tender and bring it back here, you can also build a train by backing into it. So if I go back, boom the thing is connected, and then if I go forwards, we're all moving together in one happy family. Alright, so that is the basics of building a train. Uh, to take your train apart, you have to use this fantastic coupling hook. So if you just right click on the train, it'll tell you what the state of that coupler is. So every train has a front coupler and a rear coupler, as you see, the back coupler is coupled to an UNU Type A tender. 
it even is so nice as to give you the coordinates. And then if you right click the front, it'll say that the front coupler is decoupled in normal mode. So what does that mean? Well, of course, decoupled means it's not coupled to anything. And it looks like it doesn't say whether it's in normal mode or not when it's connected. So then if you shift right click, now the coupler is, sent to, is set to shunting mode. Now what is shunting mode? Well, if I accelerate into this tender up here, as you can see, it looks like it connects, but then if I stop, it's kind of hard to see, but it actually rolls away. And then if I back up, the tender doesn't move. So shunting means that you can push trains around without actually coupling them. And then you can also set couplers that are coupled to shunting mode. So if I right click the back coupler, now the back coupler is set to shunting mode and I can abandon the rolling stock. Now you have to make sure to set it back into coupling mode if you decide, or normal mode, if you decide you want to go back to making trains. Pretty straightforward. You use the coupler hook to basically turn the coupler on and off. While we're talking about messing with trains, I can show you this little paintbrush. So some trains, uh, especially um, ones in UNU and I th uh, Adam RK's pack, I think, yeah, Adam RK's pack, offer a lot of different color options. And so this is the normal sort of black steam train. And then we also have the wonderful UNU brand steam train and the Blackthorn brand steam train and the Moonspire unofficial steam train. So you can really make your steam trains and all your trains look fantastic by swapping out their colors with the paintbrush. Um, pretty straightforward. All right, so what does the tender actually do? We know how to connect it and disconnect it. Well, the tender is basically a backup supply for your steam train. So if I open up the tender inventory, you'll notice it kind of looks like a miniature steam train inventory. We can hold a little nice amount of water and we can hold a, a nice amount of coal. And so anything that you put in this tender will automatically top off whatever is in your steam engine. So I'm actually going to remove these little coal pieces since they're almost run out to demonstrate that. So this is boiling water and creating steam. And as you can see, it's not connected to the loader and yet it is still topped off. And that is because it is connected to this tender. So the tender is automatically filling this up with water. As you see, you just saw it go up to 20,000. So it looks like it does a 10 at a time. So as you see, we're kind of running low on coal here. We have a couple empty slots. We have a couple slots that say 43. So let's go ahead and fill up our coal tender. And as you see, boom, some of the coal disappears. Now, what do you think the coal is going to look like? Hmm. It only filled up the slots that have coal in it very clever. If you have an empty slot, the tender will not fill it, because it's assuming that you don't want a full raging inferno inside your firebox. So if we put one in here, well, I guess we're going to need at least one extra, then the coal tender will top it off. Oh, ten at a time, it looks like. Alright, so now that we're fully fueled, it's time to deliver some cargo. So let's look at the different types of rolling stock. So, We've got a tank car. Very cool. And I'm stuck again. Why do I always get stuck in these things? And then I painted it purple. Alright. Sometimes I get stuck. Hopefully you don't get stuck. I'm actually going to space these out a little more. Because then I won't get stuck. Alright. So these are the main different types of rolling stock that you'll see in immersive railroading outside of the locomotives and tenders. So I'm going to go ahead and couple everything up. Perfect. Alright, now a tanker car is probably about what you expect. It's a rolling stock that holds liquid. So if you shift right click, you can see it filled up with a little bit of water because of this fluid loader here. So of course the fluid loader can load into here. We'll talk about loaders and unloaders in another episode. Uh, and yeah, you can load in fuel manually, you can unload fuel manually, or you can use loaders. And that's it. Of course, different tankers hold different amounts of fluid. Not too much to see there. 
over here we've got a cargo car. Uh, they just come in a wide variety of choices from box cars to flatbeds to stake sides, all sorts of stuff. Uh, this, for example, is a log car. Now, the reason I chose this is some cargo cars have different, uh, have a lot of the models update as you fill them up. Don't really know how to say that. But if I fill this up, you'll notice the cargo model fills up. So this shows that we've got a few little logs sitting in here. And again, this is a log car, not necessarily a coal car, but hey, what's the difference? And if I fill it up more, you see, ah, oh, there's another layer. There's another layer, and it will continue filling up until the thing is completely full. Uh, that's going to depend on the model and the modeler, but that's basically that. So now it's all full of logs. Other than that, it's... It's just a, basically a gigantic rolling chest on wheels. Uh, a few different options. Here's the boxcar, and here's a hopper. They look very fancy. They look very cool. But at the end of the day, they're still gigantic rolling chests. Now, you may be able to... I think some pack creators could put filters determining what's allowed to go in each car. Unu hasn't done that yet. Um, but yeah, basically, super gigantic chests. Uh, you can use item loaders with them. Very, very fantastic. And finally, we have the passenger car. Passenger cars also come in many different shapes and sizes, but they are all united in the fact that they do not have an inventory. But you can load them, you can walk around, and overall have a really fun time. Now, of course, cargo cars you can walk around too if they allow passengers. This usually works better for flatbeds. Definitely not, not, the, not the best thing to do on uh, the typical cargo car. Um, but yeah, other, with all of that, that is pretty much everything. Now you know everything you need to know to make your own trains. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you found it useful, and I hope uh, the several month waiting time lives up to its hype. Uh, I'm very bad at maintaining a regular schedule, but I will eventually finish this series the last thing i believe is the loaders and unloaders which should be a little easier oh boy that boy's getting fast so if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like um, i'm i try to keep up on comments i don't always read them as they come but if you have any feedback or have any knowledge to bestow upon other people seeking IR knowledge, go ahead and leave it in the, leave it in the comment section. Uh, I usually pin helpful comments when I see them. If you like the trains used in this video, I make them. Uh, those are, they're all quality UNU brand trains. You can download the quality UNU brand packs also in the description below. And if you really like my stuff, you can support me on Patreon. I have one of those too. Um, if you don't like this video and you don't like my tutorials and you think I'm an idiot, I know you'll let me know in the comments. I see those all the time. Several people tell me I need to know more about trains. Uh, but yeah, uh, with that rambling mess, uh, that's the end of the video.